Hi there. This is my review of the Mossberg MVP. Mossberg has a bunch of different styles of the MP MVP out. Um, it's also offered in two chamberings, 308 and 556. Yes, this is a 556 bolt action rifle. Uh, makes it kind of interesting, and there's a few other interesting things about it, and I'll talk about those. This particular Mossberg is the Varmint. If you want to take a look at the other ones, do hit the Mossberg site. It's kind of interesting to see what, what all they're offering. Uh, some of it makes sense and some of it's kind of strange, but go check it out. Here in Canada, these retail for between $650 and $700 Canadian. Generally, when they're sitting around the $700 mark, you'll, you'll find those in stock. When they are at the $650 and below, you're probably going to have a hard time finding them. And if you do see a pop-up for that, you probably want to jump at it. Uh, at, at the time of this shooting, it's it's spring uh, 2015, so give you an idea of where things are. Anyway, this rifle, uh, as I was saying, comes chambered in 5.56, uh, which means you can use both 5.56 and 2.23 equally without any worries. And that's kind of nice. Uh, it comes with a 24-inch medium bull barrel. The barrel is fluted, as is the bolt. The fluting is very, very shallow on both the bolt and the barrel. It's, it's really purely decorative. Whatever you, you can say about fluting, it is just so shallow, it's just, it is really decorative and I'll, I'll kind of delve into that a little bit as we go. Uh, the barrel is a 1 in 9 twist and the rifle comes with a, here in Canada at least, a pinned 5 round magazine. The States, this would be a 10 round magazine. Fortunately here in Canada, rifle magazines have to be pinned to 5 rounds. Now pistol magazines, like the LAR 15 pistol mags, which are 10 rounds, you can go buy, use them in the rifle, and it's perfectly legal. I'll actually link uh, the RCMP document, and I would suggest keeping a copy of it printed out. Keep it in your range bag, uh, just in case you do run into to somebody that doesn't understand the rules. Uh, you can show them that document and say, here you go. And it's very clear, very interesting, and it shows how we can use a variety of different magazines to get over the five-round limit, all the way up to 15 rounds. Uh, anyway... Uh, that's kind of the big selling point, the, that magazine anyway, for the, the 1 in 5.56. Five, uh, the rifle weighs 7 and 3 quarter pounds, which pretty much puts it, I think it's just about 2 pounds lighter than the Savage Model 12 with the 26 inch barrel, and probably pretty close to that for the Remington 700 uh, chambered in 2.23. What's interesting about this rifle is it's designed specifically around the, the 5.56 or 223. When you take a look at the bolt, it is scaled down somewhat compared to what you would see in a, a, a Savage or a Remington or, or anything else. Just because what they're doing with the, the other rifles is they're basically taking a short action and then just having the barrel and chamber cut to whatever it is they're using. So the 308 is going to have the same amount of meat on it as the 223. So the 223 is going to be quite heavy comparatively. There's going to be an awful lot of material. And particularly with the bolt, it doesn't really need to be it. This is a perfectly good bolt. The rifle is embarrassingly savage-like. It's got the, the floating bolt head. It's got the barrel nut. And I forget what that. I don't even know what Mossberg calls it, but it's basically an AccuTrigger. You know what, everybody's kind of jumping into the, jumping onto the, the bandwagon with what Savage has done. You'll notice the bolt has this piece. Hopefully the camera's getting it. That's to assist in stripping off rounds out of the magazine. It works quite well. It does look flimsy. But when you think about it, most of the pressure is going straight back that way. So it's going to be quite, quite strong. I, I haven't heard of any problems with it, so anyway, that's what it looks like. Give you an idea of the size of the bolt in comparison to a, a 223 case. So you can see that it's 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 it is quite a bit smaller than usually what you would see in a 223. That being said, it's I'm sure it's just fine. Okay, uh, let's talk about the pros, I guess. Uh, biggest pro. For me anyway, this is all just my opinion, I suppose. 
it takes the AR-15 magazines and it gives you a lot of freedom. You know, not only are these magazines uh, fairly inexpensive, but you can you can change your your capacity. This, by the way, does it's fairly flush, drops free quite nicely. The the magazine catch is not necessarily easy to, to get into, but then again, uh, it's not going to get caught on anything and set it off or anything like that. So depending on what you want to do. Now this rifle is is kind of almost light enough to carry around. It is a tiny little bit awkward, but it's not as bad as a bull barrel Savage Model 12 or Remington 700 varmint. They, they've scaled it down enough that you could probably carry it around without killing yourself. Back in there. Of course I had to do that on camera. Fumble around. Anyway, uh, the second big pro, and this always sells me on a rifle, regardless of what's happening, is it has decent accuracy. Surprisingly accurate, actually. Despite a few of the things I'm going to tell you about it, it shoots quite well. It wasn't quite as accurate as my Savage Model 12, but my Savage Model 12 had a 1 in 7 twist. And with lighter bullets, this rifle is going to be a little better for, for what I'm doing. And to be honest, I wasn't really using the full uh, capability of my Savage Model 12 1 in 7 twist barrel. Very seldom did I ever shoot it out past 300 meters, so it was kind of pointless, so I did sell the rifle. Love the rifle, but it's just, you know what, it didn't make sense to have both of these, and I've kind of invested some money and time into this, so I'm going to switch to this for a while. Uh, anyway, uh, the next big pro is it has a good trigger. There are snap caps in this, just so I can show this. Nice and crisp, not too heavy. It's about three pounds. I could probably set it lower. I'm not going to. I like it set like that. Ejection is nice. Oh, I have one snap cap in. I'm going to have to figure out where my other one went then. Earth I did with it. Anyway, uh, another big pro is it's chambered in 5.56. That's nice. You can you can use whatever you like in it. You know what? If you can still find cheap surplus ammo, this rifle will take it. I realize it does say 223. It's actually 5.56 ammo. And if you try and run this stuff in your Remington or Savage, it's going to be it's not going to function quite as smooth as you would like it to. The, the bolt's going to be kind of sticky. Likewise, this stuff. 5.56. Five, That's just a couple examples that I, that I can show. I, of course, have fired that all in my, my bolt guns and not had a big problem. But, hey, if you, if you, if you care, this is an actual bolt action 5.56. Five, and it really puts that to rest. Uh, another pro is it's got a, a nice strong stock uh, right out of the factory with it. It's comfortable. Uh, I like it. If you're left-handed, you're probably going to want to take a look at it because it's not symmetrical. It's clearly designed, particularly in the palm swell area, for a right-handed shooter. So you're going to want to give it a try. Not to mention, you know what, it's a right-handed bolt. I'm not a lefty, so I really can't say anything about that, but something to think about. And I guess uh, the last pro was, as I mentioned, it's actually designed for 223, and as such, they've, they've saved weight. Great bolt lock lug design and everything. It's good and strong. I have no fear of it not being strong enough, but there isn't a ton of extra meat for you to carry around. So they've, they've kind of done some sensible things. Okay, next, let's go and look at the cons here. Biggest con is it has a plastic trigger guard and a plastic magazine well. Now, I can show you a bit of it on camera. I think I just found the other snap cap. <laughs> anyway, there's a, a plastic piece, and it also supports uh, the, the barrel assembly when you tighten it all down. Now, in the States, there's readily available replacement components that you can order. Uh, Tromix is one company I know of for sure, where you can get a, a milled aluminum trigger guard 
and a milled aluminum mag weld. In Canada, these are pretty pricey to bring in and you're really going to have to love the rifle in order to do it. I went ahead and did it just because I, I think I'm going to keep this rifle for quite some time. And the plastic, having a plastic under here and the action bedded down on top of it kind of bothered me. It just, one of those things that would just keep bugging me. That being said, I'm sure it's fine. You know what, I've got an entire rifle made out of plastic. Here it is, never let me down. Here's a size comparison, by the way. So it's not, it, it actually looks bigger than it, it actually is. Anyway, uh, going back to the plastic bag, well, that's my biggest complaint. You know, if I were to say something to, to Mossberg, it would be, don't bother fluting the barrel and the bolt. No need to, to get fancy with the stock or whatever. Just keep a, a plain Jane kind of laminate stock with some checkering on it. Cut all that out and give us an all steel component rifle instead of making it kind of gaudy. I don't know. That's my that's my only criticism. I really have no right to complain because, like I say, right as the as the rifle stands, it's quite accurate. And you really can't argue with success like that. And it's it's. As far as I can tell, it would be nearly impossible to break it. Just because the, the magazine well is supported by the laminate stock. So I really can't see anything bad happening to it. I think the trigger guard uh, can crack if you over tighten it or whatever. I've heard something about that. But that's just common sense. Don't go crazy when you're tightening tightening the action down. Uh, you, you don't need to, to put a half inch drive ratchet on it and reef the heck out of it. You can just give her snug and that should be enough. Uh, another negative is the barrel actually isn't free-floated. Again, I have no idea if the camera is going to pick this up or not. But they almost purpose, well, they did purposely have a raised channel that the barrel sits up on, which I'm really not sure why they did that. Whether that tunes the barrel or not, I'm going to take it down. I'm going to put my aluminum components in, and while I have it all apart, I'm going to take that right down and have the whole barrel free floated pretty much from the, the lock nut back and give it a try and see how it is. Lord knows this, this laminate stock has lots of meat to it and it most definitely can support itself you know if it's if it's bedded back here you've got the bipod up here you know unless you leap up and down on the thing it's it's not going to make contact this is a good stiff stock. Laminate is plenty strong for that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, that's really the big ones on the, the cons. Uh, the, just the design of this kind of makes it hard to bed the action. if Because when you do, you're basically gluing this into, into there. And if you want to get in there and work on this for any reason, you wouldn't be able to. You'd have to take out your bedding compound, and that would be a major pain. Now, do you need to bed this? You know, the accuracy, you really don't. You know, unless you're looking for match grade accuracy, there's really no need for it. And this isn't really a, something you would call a match rifle, I suppose. I don't know, maybe people do. I really shouldn't say that. I'll leave that up to you. That was kind of a negative to me, uh, just because it would bother me to, to kind of glue this into place, because it does sit in that way. So once, it, once you've got it bedded in there, it's not coming out ever again until you rip that bedding compound. I guess my thoughts, uh, pretty much have already stated, you know, get rid of the, the gaudy stuff, go with all metal components, and, you know, that would, that would make this a, a much more marketable, reliable rifle. Is it a problem? No, I don't think so. But, you know, all steel components are certainly attractive to most people. It's also worth noting that this rifle is popular enough that there is a surge in aftermarket components for it, including a very interesting 300 blackout barrel. Uh, Tromix makes that, and you know this has got the, the basically the savage lock nut for the barrel, so it's very easy to swap the barrels. You need a set of no-go gauges or whatever, and I believe Tromix sells the barrel with the tools all in, in one kit. I think they even have the block to put the, you know, to hold the barrel in a vise and throw the wrench on it and loosen it up. They, they've got it all as a package and it's not all that expensive. 
How accurate is it? I don't know. Uh, probably pretty decent, just inherently. This rifle seems to be kind of accurate. And I've heard people talking that they like it, so it, it must be suitable. And, you know, the thoughts of this rifle in 300 Blackout kind of... You know, I'd need two then, I guess. <laughs> so I better not. I think I'll leave it at 223-556 and call it a day. Anyway, the uh, second part of the video is going to be accuracy, and I think I'll leave it as a separate video, just so it's not too, too long. Anyway, stay tuned for that. I hope this video has been useful or entertaining in its own way. Do leave comments or suggestions down below if you'd like, and uh, have a good day.